Christianity came to Nigeria in the 15th century through Augustinian and Capuchin monks from Portugal. The first mission of the Church of England was though only established in 1842 in Badagri by Henry Townsend. In 1864, Samuel Ajay Crowder, an ethnic Yoruba and former slave, was elected Bishop of the Niger and the first black bishop of the Anglican Communion. Lagos became a diocese of its own in 1919. Leslie Gordon Vining became the Bishop of Lagos in 1940 and in 1951 the first Archbishop of the newly inaugurated province of West Africa. Vining was the last Bishop of Lagos of European descent. On February 24, 1979, the then existing 16 Anglican dioceses in Nigeria were joined to form the Church of Nigeria, a newly founded province of the Anglican Communion, with the Most Reverend Timothy O. Olufosuye, the then Bishop of Ibadan, becoming its first Archbishop, Primate, and Metropolitan. In 1986, he was succeeded by the Most Reverend J. Abiodun Adetiluye, who became the second primate and metropolitan of Nigeria, a position he held until 1999. The Church of Nigeria was rated the fastest growing Anglican province worldwide. In 1989, the Diocese of Abuja was created on the area of the new capital of Nigeria, with Peter Jasper Akinola as its first bishop. In 2000, Archbishop Peter Akinola succeeded Archbishop Adit Siloye as primate of the Church of Nigeria, and Abuja Diocese became the seat of the Church of Nigeria permanently. This was necessary and agreed upon as the Nigeria capital was moved from Lagos to Abuja. We had a synod at Sokoto, one day general synod. There, it was resolved that the Church of Nigeria should move from Lagos. It was in Lagos before, at Marina, as headquarters. But that decision was taken that since the federal capital has moved, we should not stay behind there. We should move with the, the government. That Abuja should be the permanent seat of the Church of Nigeria, which means anybody who is elected primate will leave his diocese and come to Abuja to stay. Before, it was not so. If you look up here, you see Olufo Soye, Archbishop, when he was primate, he was in Ibadan. Uh, Aditi Louie, when he was primate, he was in, on the marina. Uh, Baba Akinola was the first, because here was his diocese, he was elected here, was the archbishop here. So it happened that when he became the primate, he stayed here, but that was not his authority to be here. The authority to be here was the decision that was taken in Sokoto to make this place a permanent abode for the Church of Nigeria as headquarters. So you can't have headquarters without having a building. And um, we continue to use what used to belong to Abuja Diocese as the temporary office. And we have branched out and there are many, many departments that are not being properly accommodated. So that was the, the necessity for the building of the big building. A strong desire for a befitting edifice for the Church of Nigeria was consistently expressed by numerous members of the Church. The leadership of the Church made several attempts to secure a parcel of land for the project of a National Secretariat of the Anglican Communion for the Church of Nigeria. 
During these efforts, General Theophilus Danjuma magnanimously donated his piece of land located in Gudu, Abuja to the Church of Nigeria for these projects in the year 2009. The Most Reverend Peter Jasper Akinola, as at this time the primate of the Church of Nigeria, therefore requested the service of Habitat Associates, owned by architect Sunday A. Alabi of Blessed Memory, to offer a service of stewardship to God, which he did. Primate Nicholas D. Oko in 2010 succeeded Archbishop Peter Jasper Akinola and took the bold step of ensuring the collaboration of all the dioceses and individual donations towards the building of the Secretariat of the Church of Nigeria. We received some generous donations. First, the land itself was donated by General T.Y. Danjuma. And the initial drawing was made by uh, Habitat and Associates under the direction of the former primate, uh, the Most Reverend Peter Jasper Akinola, who invited the team. And they worked together to make the drawing, to supervise the drawing and so on and so forth. But somehow, after it was approved, um, no further action was taken because of too many commitments. And eventually, Baba Akinola retired and he handed the project over to me. So when the decision was taken, we had no choice but to take it up and say this is what we need to do. The Habitat Company now started acting with responsibility continue to work on this project until it's approved. And that's what happened. But by the time the approval came out, I had about uh, four months in Abuja to leave Abuja. So, I said, Nicholas, I said, so, take. <laughs> now it's your responsibility. That was the background of the necessity of building that place. When it was decided that the church will have a permanent headquarters, then it became imperative that uh, a building should accommodate the place, the, the headquarters. The foundation of the building was laid in November 2015. By God's grace, I was uh, the General Secretary of the Church of Nigeria when the foundation was laid. Uh, under our great leader, the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Dioko. I It's true that uh, the Church of Nigeria had earlier proposed that the Secretariat will be built. And uh, it's also true that our former private mate, the Most Reverend Akiola, started the process. But the determination and uh, the vision to make sure that whatever plan we had you know, was converted into reality was done by the present private. And I so thank God that I worked with him, uh, a man of great zeal, a man who wouldn't rest unless uh, that which had been planned for God has been fulfilled. So I was privileged to be the general secretary when plans were made, meetings held, and uh, I, I served as supervisor working with the committee and uh, to the glory of God I must tell you that if you work with a man that is in vision and you are determined to follow him and to assist and to serve with all due commitment, you will also be privileged to enjoy the fruits of what God has done. So this will stand as the headquarters where the primate will sit as his own office including all his workers. If you see the large auditorium, uh, the primate may wish probably to say, well, let's open it for other denominations who want to have conferences. The auditorium is quite large. It can take about 2,000 people and that's going to be furnished very well. So it could be open to public and in terms of economic benefits, it may bring some income to the church. 
but also for tourists, those who will come from outside the country would come to see where is the Church of Nigeria, the Anglican Communion, where is their secretariat. Now having this edifice will be our pride as a church that tourists will come in to see that Church of Nigeria has one of the best secretariat in the capital territory. Let's hear from the chairman of the building project committee, architect Taiwo Olumoyoa. The project has gone through various stages of conception before what we could refer to as the actual implementation stage. The initial conception stage was, there was an initial design for this site that was done by Habitat Associates. That is a firm of actors on the Adebe Yalabi. The design was done in 2009 and was approved in 2010 for the site. Um, so that design was in place. But in 2014, the current primate uh, took the decision for the actual execution of this project. So what he did was that he consulted a technical committee of professionals, architects, engineers, all of us members of the church. And he had a meeting with us in June 2014. And he showed us the design that has been done and has been approved by FCDA as the takeoff point. And he said he wanted the project realized as soon as possible, but he put the conditions that at with cost effectiveness and also that we needed to review the design in terms of the return need of the church. You know, like I said earlier, the design was approved in 2009. We are talking about 2014. So there has been a time lapse of about five years. So he, he charged the committee to review the design vis-a-vis -vis the, the then current need of the church in terms of physical functions. Then also, he wanted us also to look at design holistically, possibly, if need be, to redesign it so as to ensure that the project, once started, will be within the limit, within the scope that the church can start and finish. In his words, he wanted a project that is cost effective, that is functional, that will effectively meet the need of the church. The church. So the, after that meeting with him, the committee, we had uh, architects who, like I said, we have four architects, myself, then we have architect Wale Ademo, we have architect Okoli, and we have architect Gumwalk. So four of us were the architects that were charged to review this, of course, under my chairmanship. And so we had, um, we had a roundtable review meeting on the design, and we had suggestions as to what needed to change. And so we had a redesign, a new design submission that was developed. So in November 2014, we presented the first design proposal a redesign scheme. My colleague at Tegom Work actually traveled to Enugu to present to the Church of Nigeria Standing Committee our proposal then. And so approval was given in principle for us to go ahead and uh, develop the scheme. So we came back and reviewed the design and looked again at the initial design that we had. Then we also considered the issue of planning approval. Like I said, we had an existing approval for this site. We have an existing approved design. And so we now had another final design scheme, which is what we now have now. For you to undertake any development in Abuja, you must get final approval. So we had to resubmit the, the new design scheme to FCDA, which they had to vet. They went through it, we reviewed it, and it was reviewed, and finally they granted us approval. The church also, we had to pay another approval fee, but of course with some concessions since there was an existing approval. And I also would like to say that uh, there were actually some members, some friends of members of the committee that actually came to render support to us, ex gratis. For instance, the structural design was done by a friend who just assisted us to get it done. The services design was done by a friend. Of course, the county surveyor is a member of the church. So we want to use this opportunity to thank all those friends that came to support us to ensure that we succeeded in the assignment committed to us. And of course, they saw it as a service to God. Because anything being done in the name of God is being done for the church, but ultimately, 
is a form of service to God. So all those are friends that came on board, they recognize that. And various individuals that came on board for the supervision of the project, we really want to use this time uh, to thank them, Architect Godwin and our friend engineer. The design scheme as we have it now is slightly different from that initial design that was presented. I, so to say, it's more or less like a hybrid of the initial design uh, that was done by Habitat Associates in terms of the form, but also we, re we did replanning of the site because the initial scheme, the design was right in the center of the site. Now we felt in terms of utilization of the site, we shifted the building to one side and left the other side open so that we can have a good balance of built up area and open area which we think will be quite uh, desirable for the church. So that is the design scheme. So that was 2010-2014 and um, November 2015 the foundation laying ceremony took place. It was done by the, by the primate himself assisted by archbishops and bishops of the diocese. So that marks the, uh, the actual commencement of the construction works. It's important to say that now in terms of physical arrangement for the construction, this project has been done wholly, completely by members of the church, both in terms of the design, both in terms of the actual construction. We've had um, three levels of involvement of people for the actual construction. The first stage was done by uh, architect, I mean, engineer Francis Obi, Vera Consultant. So because when the primary wanted us to move to site, he said, look, whatever happens, let us begin activities. So engineer Obi did the first site clearing activities, the setting out, leading to the foundation uh, laying ceremony. As at that stage, we have been able to firm up the design, the bill of quantities, and then the basis for us to be able to engage a labor-only contractor. So we did the bill of quantities with the drawing, so we invited tenders from professionals within the church. After the, the bidding process, we now selected uh, a, a, a firm of, by a firm of uh, architect uh, Achigbu. His, the name of his company is Base Consult. So he then took over from where Engineer Obi stopped. So Engineer uh, Achigbu's con uh, company did the construction from foundation, that is after the foundational lane ceremony, up to the roof level. So in effect, he was responsible for the superstructural works. Then the finishing stage was another arrangement. It is almost not unexpected that there will be challenges on projects and every project has its own peculiarity. Now the project we have at hand now, remember, the, we are doing it on two, on two uh, planks. On the one hand, the church is responsible for direct procurement of materials. What, what, what that has informed us is that we have been able to cut down about 30% of the cost of realizing this project. But what we've done is that the church, we have a structure in place where we go directly to the manufacturers of products. We are buying, for instance, we are buying cement in bulk directly from the factory. We get, we're getting our granite directly from factories. So all the components of the, the, uh, the, into the project are brought directly, are procured directly so I know, to cut down the cost. At various stages, we have had to review. But one thing I will need to say here is that uh, we have been blessed by the drive and the vision of the primate. But he seems to be ahead of the committee at every point. And he strengthens our hands and gives us all the support so every stage we needed to review the structure, the arrangement, is always supportive, he's always guiding us. Sometimes he'll tell us, look, we need to do this. And by the time we do it, later we now realize, oh, the primate apparently saw well ahead. The primate, I would call him a builder in, in, in the line of Nehemiah, the great builder. This is somewhat almost an impossible task to be accomplished. But the zeal of the primate his commitment, his enthusiasm about this project made it happen. I remember there are times that he will call late at night and say, General Secretary, what is going on on site? Go and see and report back to me. And I will come to the site and report back to him. And whenever there are issues for us to discuss, he will either mobilize people to come and then we, we will sit down together and we'll discuss with the people and find the best hands to handle different parts of the, the project. 
he has led the House of Bishops to contribute uh, towards the building of the Secretariat. Uh, personally, too, he has been having a series of meetings with us and the work committee, and uh, his mind has always been that let's have a befitting Secretariat, and to the glory of God, uh, we have one now. And we actually would like to give thanks to the leadership of our church. You will recall that at a point, the Dean of the Church of Nigeria also joined the team in order to give us all the support that we needed. I started supervising the project when it was not roofed. Uh, no windows were made and no doors, the, no electricals. Uh, it was just a bare building. And we started the work and we had to look into the team, the team that we are working uh, on ground. Uh, some of them actually delayed the work so much. We targeted uh, from April to July to dedicate the Secretariat. This was not possible because we had a lot of discrepancies with the, um, with the architects and engineers. Uh, differences in opinion, especially in the, in the pace of the work. Uh, as far as I was concerned, it was slow and uh, we had to uh, actually relieve some of the architects and the engineers so that we can have the work done. This was with the cooperation of the, the primate of our church and the work moved. The Office of the General Secretary, through all this period, they were all involved, uh, including all the occupants of the Office of the General Secretary over time. Uh, Bishop Oluwarumbi, Bishop Fagbemi, Bishop uh, Israel Kuki, even the then Acting General Secretary, Venerable Ben, and the current General Secretary. My first meeting on site is on the 7th of uh, March 2018, when the primate called all the committee in charge of the building to be debriefed on the progress of work. And that was my first time of meeting, and it was exciting for me to see that Church of Nigeria is having a structure that they are building for their her national secretariat. So we have had the maximum full support of the office, of the headship of the church. Uh, I must also appreciate the work of the general secretary of our church, who would always um, be with me. Of course, he looks at the work, the paperwork, carefully, thoroughly. He scrutinizes them, and before they are processed, for any payment. We have also visited so many different factories and industries looking at things like furniture, um, the petitioning of the, the secretariat, for example. We have looked at different type of granites to be used, electricals and so on. All this we were uh, personally going around some companies to look for this and try to see the, the best that will fit the building. At the initial stage, we had the desire to do the project much faster than it ended up. But we also had the commitment to ensure that we do to the highest standard possible. We execute the project as with the maximum cost effectiveness so the quality control and all that, nothing was compromised whatsoever.
I cannot um, put a finger now on it. Possibly on the day of dedication when the accounts department must have tabulated everything. I may not be able to immediately say what the cost, what the present cost is now. But maybe by the time we liaise with the accounts department, we'll be able to get exact information on this. But one thing for sure is that um, at every point, prudence and effective cost management was actually put in place. So I'm sure by the time the books are put together, we'll be able to say precisely what we have done. Total money spent so far is a little over a billion. That is to say, one billion and thirty-eight million seven hundred and twenty-nine thousand three hundred and fifty-two naira. All the consultancy services were done free. If you do a project of this, you'll be paying fees running to hundreds of millions, even for services rendered, not for at the design stage, also at the supervision stage. You can imagine engaging consultants for upward of from 2015 to 2019, almost four years running continuously, almost on a day-to-day -day full residency service. So we have made uh, tremendous savings even in that regard. They're also in terms of our savings on materials and the cost of procurement and everything. So I think regarding cost management, we've had uh, a very prudent management of cost, spearheaded and insisted upon by the primate that the structure, the system, because what we have is that we have layers of vetting and screening submissions. Alternatives for submissions are received. They are vetted at various levels so that whatever the first level we did not see, another person will be able to see it to ensure that we get value for money at every point. Projects actually go through stages of completion. There is what is called um, practical completion. Then there is what is called final completion. Then there is what is called pre-occupation. So, so what I'm saying in essence now, what we are achieving now, we are achieving the practical completion of the project. It means the client can take over and then we begin to do the final stage of providing equipment, movable equipment, fixed equipment like the kitchen cabinet, the movable furniture, fixed furniture, fittings and all that. We, we have a mind, as soon as the dedication takes place, then the committee for the furnishing will be inaugurated. Yes, we don't need to hurry ourselves into it. The next thing, of course, is the furnishing of the uh, secretariat. This is huge too. It might take maybe about 500 million uh, if we will furnish it very, very well to that standard uh, befitting of that edifice. Uh, in this regard, we will continue to appeal to well-meaning Nigerians and Anglicans who will donate to was the furnishing of the uh, of the building. You can see we also need gadgets for our Anglican uh, cable network, the television. Uh, this is huge too, and uh, of course we will need, uh, apart from just chairs and tables, we will need to computerize the whole place. Uh, this is money too, of course, with a good intercom. Then after that also, when the project is completed, there is what is called defense liability period. Defense liability period is a period where all the things that have been put together to form the building are now subjected to real life usage. And so they begin to cross the T's and dot the I's. So that if there are things to amend, things to adjust, you take time to do that. Usually that is about six months to undertake, or you said that six months or one rainy season and one dry season so that if there is any issue somewhere along the line you can attend to it. So I think also though this thing project has been done through direct labor, direct arrangement, we should also be able to address our mind to the fact that okay during this period there may be issues for us to attend to so as to perfect the system as it were. So that developability will run 
and even some of the people that were involved in supplying equipment, they also have their contract that will still be running during that defilability period so that we'll be able to invite them to attend to whatever falls within their perfume. So that will be. Now, going on the long-term maintenance of the building, a structure of this nature, we actually need to address our mind to having a maintenance system. Perhaps maybe we'll have a maintenance office so that somebody that can be able to attend to, okay, we have electrical issues, we have plumbing issues, and perhaps maybe a member of the team that is conversant with all the mem all the participants in the actual construction so that we know where to go, who to call. And you know, there's what we call also as built drawings. So that somebody that has an idea where what is installed. And so that if there's an issue, we know what to attend to. So in terms of maintenance, this will have to be continuous. And I feel effective maintenance will ensure proper, uh, give a proper lifespan to the building. So it would be nice for us to have a place, a proper maintenance structure for the building. What measures are in place to ensure maximum security? Security is in two levels. There are some security systems you put in place you don't want to discuss in the open. But what we would like to say is that the design of the project took uh, adequate care of security considerations and for things that will be fitted in place to ensure there are layers of control, layers of screening, so that people do not have unauthorized access to certain places and all that. So security consciousness was quite considered in developing the design and implementing it. And also some infrastructure have been put in place so that at every stage we can take our security measures from one level to another. So I want to say that in terms of security services, the building is quite ready for us to take it to any level. What do we have in this edifice? Let's hear from the building committee chairman as it takes us through the spaces available in the building. We are walking towards the main entrance of the facility. Now from the main entrance, this is finally is going to be the main access into the, into the premises. And here we have the, the security post. Within the security post, we have a lot of uh, provisions. Now, apart from the security control outlet, we have a waiting room where people can be screened and they know who and what. Then we also have a special room for security personnel, like as we mentioned, for, so they will be able to, they have full facilities. It's like a suit, a security personnel suit. Then we have also a lounge for drivers. So our drivers that will be working here, they are effectively uh, provided for, so that they have comfortable place to stay. So that is a security house. So like I said, we have the waiting room, security control. Now from the, from the entrance, from the drive-in, so as you come into the premises, now we will see the, the layout now. It's also part of the security control. You are not driving into the premises, facing the building directly. And so, from the entrance now, you're facing the car park, then you turn towards the entrance. So the whole idea is that you don't have a situation where somebody can drive and ram us straight into the building. So that is one of the measures that we have in place. Now, now driving towards the entrance foyer. So that takes us straight to the main entrance uh, foyer. So we have the drop-off point there. That is the entrance canopy. And under that canopy, we're going to have uh, water fountain at the center there and um, we have the sky blue stamp along roof over it now the, the concept of the design you may want to see is like uh, lifting up holy hands so if you look at the building you see hands like two hands raised upward and we believe we're lifting hearts of gratitude to god we're lifting up holy hands to god and so there is upward movement where our hearts are turned up towards God. So it, we try to carry this concept through. So it's not a stagnant, static structure. So if you look at the building elevationally, you see two hands raised up in the air. If you look at the entrance canopy, you see hands being raised up in the air. So the project is supposed to be lifting, so lifting. And this concept is translated even into every aspect. If you look at our fence grill, metal grill also, you're seeing that also lifting opening up of hands. So that is the main concept. So coming to the main entrance uh, foyer now, so you go into the reception. Then from the reception, you can then distribute to the various. Now our reception is at the center. 
that is centrally located so that you'll be able to assess every part of the building from there for of course to give whoever is coming a sense of arrival you know so because the reception space is just a temporary hold on space so at the reception you have the reception counter where you can get information as to who you're looking for which floor you are and there's a space within the reception for you to stay for a while now you can see now that you've been clear at the gate there's a place at the gate where you can wait if you don't need to come into the building then when you come into the building depending on who you're looking for then they interact with the receptionist and they let you now give it direct clearance whether you go straight to wherever you want to go and see or whether you need to wait a while so we have waiting areas at the reception and also from that reception there's another screening point before you are now allowed fully into the building proper so we have those layers of screening then from the reception we now get into the central staircase lift lobby from where you can access all the floors now apart from the central staircase central lift lobby that takes you to all the all the floors we have internal staircases that people in the office can walk between various floors without necessarily mingling with whoever is coming in, coming in into the building. So we have that uh, distribution of vertical circulation of, uh, of uh, persons within the building. What we have done is that there's a lot of flexibility into the building. Now, from the reception, you can easily go to the multipurpose hall. But we also have done it such that the multipurpose hall should be able to function without interrupting with the ordinary functioning of the office. So there is a separate side entrance into the multipurpose hall. So the multipurpose hall can stand alone, function alone, without disrupting the activities within the office. Now, in terms of uh, space provisions within the complex, Indeed, the Church of Nigeria Secretariat is actually a complex. It is supposed to be the seat of government for our church in nationally. And so we have the multipurpose hall, which will provide a central place for the leadership of our church to be able to congregate and have functions of diverse nature. So we feel that the multipurpose hall will be able to cater for all kinds of meetings, worship services, gatherings, that is going to be exclusive for the church. So we have the multipurpose that will serve that purpose. Then we also have the office of the primate of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. That is at the topmost level, at the third floor of the building. So on that same level, we also have the office of the general secretary of the Church of Nigeria. Then we also have the office of the legal department, where we have the chancellor, the registrar of the church, and all that. So we have them on that level. And um, now, like you said, what other functions do we have? Coming down, we also have a chapel, because we believe as members come here to work from morning till evening, so we needed to have a place of prayer. So there's a dedicated chapel within the complex. Then we have various offices for the various directorates of the Church of Nigeria. We have office for the Mothers Union Women's Guild. We have a complete office for the ACNN, Anglican Cable Network, of the, of the church so that the church, the arm, the uh, media arm of the church will be able to reach the world. And we believe by the time this is fully fitted out, then we'll be, we'll be well prepared uh, to be able to meet our needs. So we have provision for all categories of offices. We have library, we have canteen for staff uh, conveniences. Um, then we have generous provision for conveniences. One thing we have also done is that we have taken care of disabled persons. God is a critical requirement that is such that whoever comes to this building right from the entrance, you'll be able to assess the building and be able to get to any level, to any level of the building. Now, one of the high points of the project is we have what we call panoramic lift. We have the two glazed panoramic lift that is looking into the atrium behind the auditorium. And so from at every level, as you are climbing up, you're able to see. And so there are quite a number of features that we believe will meet the needs of our church and also project the status of our church. Now, the building is named St. Matthias House, which was derived from the date the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion was founded. This building was dedicated on Wednesday, 24th of April, 2019. The successor primate, in person of the present primate, 
accomplish this uh, the vision and we are allowed to see it we are most grateful to god and we are very happy that we are seeing these things more importantly you know some people believe that uh, we can't do things like this without looking for external assistance money from america from britain from whatever but no cobble from outside the country is a money generated within our own country among our members our good members their contribution in three years and transformed to this so for all our members all anglicans in nigeria it's not to rule only bishops all anglicans in nigeria they should be very proud for what they have done we are not proud because of the building alone but now we have a place where we can meet plan strategize and move all the work of god I'm extremely delighted to see this day. It's a day we have prayed to see, we have longed for it. We had thought that we would have, um, have this place dedicated even last year. It didn't work, but I'm so delighted that today we have finally come to a point where we can dedicate this beautiful edifice to the glory of God and for the use of the Church of Nigeria as its General Secretariat. I think it's brilliant, it's beautiful, and it's a dream that has come true. I'm, I'm very excited. To say that I'm happy is understatement. I think I'm excited, I'm overwhelmed that we can make progress, gradual progress. And uh, it, from all indications, I think this is just uh, another milestone and we'll continue from there. It's not going to be the end. Uh, maybe annually, maybe every other year, we will always have something to celebrate. Yes. I'm very, very happy. I'm very, very happy today. It's um, a wonderful day to celebrate the dedication of this ma magnificent edifice. Um, it's a befitting edifice for the Anglican Church. The Anglican Church is, is the oldest in Nigeria, um, so we're very proud um, to be associated with it this morning. I'm even more proud to be Chancellor at the time when it's being dedicated. <laughs> Exciting time and uh, it's a great privilege that uh, after so many years we have a very great edifice uh, as a secretariat to be our own where we can have meetings, we can have fellowship, we can have uh, all kinds of events taking place from all over the world and within the country. It's a great joy to have this edifice today. Yes. I know you're very happy like I am. I am very happy because uh, we have to thank our primate for giving us a befitting uh, office here. You know, we are moving from our port capping office from uh, Wuse to this place. And for his own generosity, he has done that for us. And we are happy. Because ACNN is one of the powerful vehicles to evangelize and to talk the true gospel you know, to the world and to bring back the heritage, Anglican heritage, to so many of our faithful all over the world. So we are moving and God is on our side. Yes. So it is part of history uh, to be opportune to be here to witness this. And it shows we are growing, growing quite uh, rapidly as a church. And we thank God for the grace uh, given to our primates and other members who have been supportive to come up with this uh, edifice. Really, this is, a, this is a dream come true for the Church of Nigeria. How will the entire Church of Nigeria remain without the Secretariat? All this time we have been taking shelter under Abuja Daoist's uh, uh, office, which is not at all uh, something pleasant. That we are having this as a place to dedicate to this Secretarial Church of Nigeria is very exciting and is very commendable for the authorities of the church under the leadership of our primates. Indeed, we rejoice with him that at the verge of his going, this is a legacy he's leaving behind. We cannot thank God enough for his uh, leadership all the years he has been a primate. So we thank God and we are excited to be here. How do you extremely feel? happy. I am extremely happy. This is an edifice that is, in fact, I lack words to describe it. This is very beautiful. Kudos to our leaders, the primates and every individual who has contributed to make this great edifice to come to reality. We are proud of this church, the Church of Nigeria, and communion. Find me. I know you're happy too. Yes, I'm very happy today. Today is a very great day, and 
history is being made today in the Anglican Church in Nigeria and actually worldwide. Since 2011, I have been director in the Church of Nigeria headquarters and uh, heading four different directorates. And I'll be using one office. With what you are seeing here, you can see that I will have enough space for myself now. Everybody's going to get his or yeah. own space. At least we, we, the Church of Nigeria will be able to separate the department now. Mm -hmm. Each of the department for civic and political affairs, the department for justice, equity and peace, commission of the Church of Nigeria, or department for all Anglican publication, even chaplaincy to the National Assembly will be able to separate the offices now. I think the church has done a wonderful work here and we are very glad. Because uh, for us, not having a national secretariat over a long period of time is not a good something for us. So this is a great feat that has been achieved by our primates and the entire Church of Nigeria. So I'm very excited. I'm proud to be an Anglican. Well, we're happy to be here. And want to thank God for this great edifice of the Church of God here in Nigeria. It is, it is awesome, it's wonderful that God has used our primates and, and the faithful throughout Nigeria to put up this project. It's an encouragement. I'm delighted and um, happy to be here to witness this uh, historical event. Uh, this is an edifice, a very gigantic edifice. And uh, we thank God for giving us uh, a leader who has a vision, a leader that is focused, a leader that is determined, and a person of the most reverend doctor, uh, Nicholas D. Oko, the parliament of all Nigeria. And we are happy to be part of this historical event today. Yeah. Actually, this is a memorable day. Very cheering and very cheerful. This is a day we've been dreaming of. Church of Nigeria being the biggest and greatest populated church, Anglican church, uh, should have a befitting secretariat, which have been a minus to our identity and integrity, I say. So seeing today is like seeing fulfillment. It's like seeing, you know, arrive a mission accomplished. So in a nutshell, it's a wonderful day of joy, fulfillment, contentment, and confidence in the Church of Nigeria. Thanking God for our primate, the Most Reverend Dr. Nicholas Oko, who has been used to achieve this feat. It's wonderful. Something like this is happening in our own time. You can see that this building is an architectural masterpiece and uh, it's a sign notion for all to see and the most important thing is that it's also completed at a record time you will see some building going on for 20 30 years a building of this magnitude and to be completed in a very few years is a very very good thing and we thank god we want to congratulate ababa the primate the most reverend nicolas oko who is a great achiever you can see that this one is completed. The other time, it was the Episcopal House, a massive building. And now, it is the National Secretariat of the Church of Nigeria. We thank God that at least we have an identity now where the Church of Nigeria can operate from. So happy indeed uh, uh, for what the Lord has done to us and for us in this uh, church, the Church of Nigeria. Uh, sincerely, we have seen the glory of God in action yeah and this is the beginning of good things we are expecting the church of nigeria and uh fighting the good fight of faith that has been our slogan we've seen that this is a reality that god has brought us to, a, to an age that uh, we are moving forward and we give kudos to our primate uh i'm a primate who has achieved this at his own tenure and time we are indeed very glad we are happy this is the Lord's doing, and it's so marvelous in our eyes. Amen. We are so grateful. I believe every Anglican in Nigeria is not only happy, they are joyful. They are celebrating, they are glad. They're just happy and appreciating God for what the Lord has done for us. It is indeed great. And we can only pray that God will continue to bless all the verses that has helped 
to achieve this? I'm excited. I'm elated. Today, I'm a very proud Anglican because of this edifice, this wonderful work, this glorious work. I mean, it just adds a lot of beauty, a lot of color to our church. And I'm so happy that it is happening before my own very eyes. We give God glory and we thank the primate as well. Well, I'm so delighted to be invited uh, to the opening of this, uh, uh, the, uh, the new uh, diocese uh, uh, secretariat. Uh, I think beautiful uh, from what I've seen. And I think the diocese have made a very great effort to produce such a beautiful place for all Christians, all Anglicans uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. So I'm delighted and congratulate uh, you know, our primate and all his team uh, you know, that have really uh, produced this great edifice. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Very delighted. All of us were happy, we were delighted, magnificent place. It's a very, very good uh, thing that has been done. So we congratulate the entire church. We appreciate the primate and all the bishops and all of those who work so hard to make this possible, including the former you know, primate. Everybody works so hard. Magnificent. <laughs> well, I, what I want to share with you is that um, I'm delighted. This is an edifice all Anglicans should be proud of. This is an edifice we should appreciate our most reverend Dr. Nicholas Oku for what he has done. So I enjoyed all the Anglican faithfuls as we dedicate this to the glory of God. I want to thank you very much and I know that uh, this edifice will go a long way in projecting the image of the Anglican communion. That we Anglicans, we know what you are doing. Most of them say the money we are getting, we are doing the, the way, no, we are not doing the money we are getting from our parishioners. Look at what you have done now. And I believe we will do more to the glory of God. For me, this is a dream come true. It's, it's, it's a vision crystallized. And we must definitely thank God for giving us the person of the primate who followed up this dream of his uh, predecessors and mobilized the church and managed the resources and committed himself to it and today it is a living reality. This stands to his credit for posterity and we rejoice. I'm excited, I'm excited. This is a vision uh, coming true. This is a vision being realized. Anybody coming here today must be rejoicing and thanking God. Uh, some years ago, one would, thought, one would have thought that this can never happen, but it has happened. So we are so grateful to God, we are so glad, we appreciate what God is doing, and we thank Him for what He has done. I think happy is just an understatement. I'm excited. All glory be to God. I see grace. Overflow of grace here. It is a mighty edifice. I must say I'm very excited and uh, we must congratulate our primate, the grand patron of our fellowship, for this mighty structure he has put in place for us. So I'm very happy to be here. And uh, to be witness of this dedication is something more than this world. So we are, we from the AYF, are very happy for this edifice. Today is one of my happiest days, and particularly after the joy of the Easter celebration, we are coming to dedicate this edifice uh, to the glory of God, and so it's with joy and gladness. And we thank the primate who had the vision to put it here, the most reverend Dr. Nicholas Dioko. We congratulate him, congratulate his wife, congratulate the entire Church of God for what the Lord has done through him in putting this great edifice here to the praise and glory of God. I am extremely happy. Uh, if I speak on behalf of others, I would say we are extremely happy. And I'm sure I'm speaking their mind too, that this, this great humongous project has been achieved within such a short period of time. We, we are grateful to God that by this, the Anglican denomination is being properly and steadily rooted in the annals of uh, Nigeria and particular in Abuja. I need to say that 
Anglican Church, right from the very beginning, was raised to liberate and to set the pace. The Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion has always been on the forefront and setting the pace for this nation. This is an uncommon feat, and we are indeed grateful to God for having this. I'm so excited. I'm overwhelmed. This is a landmark achievement for Church of Nigeria. So I thank God for what I'm seeing. And this is a point that we found our Church of Nigeria is growing. And we pray that this landmark will affect our spiritual growth also. We appreciate the Primate commending for this gigantic project. The zeal and the courage to make it happen. Um, on this edifice, he has given the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion a face in Abuja here, and we're excited. We feel good about it. He has written his name in the sand of history. As long as Anglican Church is concerned, we now have a story to tell our children and our children's children of how God have used great men like him to give Anglican Church a face and a hope and a future.